A family experience. <laughs> What's up, family? Okay, I cannot believe that I'm here today. I'm just, you know, kind of, it's super surreal to me that I'm on here today and that I'm speaking about somebody who I had the privilege of knowing, who I had the privilege of calling a brother. But I did a video about four to five years ago capturing the story of a man who we know as Eric Betts. And man, this story really captures his life. He's, he gets vulnerable and he expresses his truth in these videos. I wanted today to honor his strength, the fact that he was in the chair and he made tons of sacrifices. He always allowed Jesus to use him and he was always willing to be the light. You know, I remember times that me and Eric would travel out of town, we would travel into the projects, we would travel everywhere. We would even knock on people's doors to go and pray for them and just, you know what I'm saying, show them love. And my brother, no matter what, he will always be there to encourage other people. So this world wants to highlight your shortcomings. They want to highlight your flaws, your imperfections. But today, I wanted to highlight his life. So yes, we know my brother lived for God. We know he got hurt. We know he got distracted. We know he got tricked. And ultimately, we know he got killed by the enemy's devices. However, the Bible says, true love bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, and endures all things. I ask you, man, you know what I'm saying? If you're having a hard time to just have this perspective like me, I'll keep believing that all my brother's work for the kingdom, all of his efforts, all of his prayers brought him face to face with Jesus. And even in his unfaithfulness, in the end, I'm trusting and believing that Jesus was still faithful. So I just want to tell y'all about some stories, man. I want to tell y'all about some times we was in some homeless shelters. We was giving some stuff and, you know, because Eric was in a chair, the homeless people, they would respect him, but they will always try him too. They'll go to him and be like, you know, what's this going to do for me? And they would, they would be like, like he would be trying to give and they would be trying him, just pressing on him. But you know, E, he was a G, so he will always check him, even if they're homeless. He had a mouth on him. And he would, he'll try to cuss you out, but he'll do it in a biblical way. You know what I'm saying? Where he'll use Bible verses to chop you in half, to make you feel like, man, like, how you trying to clown me using the Bible? You know what I'm saying? But at the end, he always had good intentions and he always uplift people and brought them back to their proper place. But you knew, even though bro was in a chair, don't try his life because he was going, you know what I'm saying, hurt your feelings with his words. <laughs> he used words to fight. You know what I mean? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And then I also remember just how he had neighborhood prayer gatherings. He would go into different neighborhoods, even places he wasn't from. And he would just bring crowds of people out. He'll be praying for everybody. You know what I'm saying? He did bike drives for kids. He did toy drives, clothes drives. My bro was really promoting the kingdom while he was on this earth. And for that, man, I'm, I'm just truly excited to be here today and really honor his life and showcase his life. You know what I mean? But I want you to know this. Listen, you're never too far away. I don't care what you did. I don't care, you know what I'm saying, what the world says about you. You are never out of reach of God. So I just want to encourage you that if you're suicidal, if you're going through something, call this number at the bottom of the screen, but also pray to God, you know what I'm saying, because he's with you. Call on Jesus. He's the most forgiving, the most faithful, the most loving person you'll ever meet, man. He's, he's always there with arms wide open. You can never think to yourself like I did too much. Always go back to God. He's always willing to accept you back home. You know what I mean? Because you got to realize your life is bigger than this time on earth. You are going to live for the ages to come. So no matter what you're facing in this life, it gets greater later. Remember that. But he asked me, man, to be on the Freedom Experience. He asked me to be on this show. And we didn't get a chance to make that happen because he obviously left earth. You know what I'm saying? But I did have the opportunity to capture his story. I did have the opportunity to showcase, you know what I'm saying, his life and let him tell it. And right now, I just want to thank you, God, and ask you, Lord, to play this in the theaters of heaven. But, man, I just ask you guys, man, be encouraged. Know that my brother, you know what I'm saying, he lived his life. He was a light. And no matter what, make sure you shine your light, man. I hope this encourages you. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the episode of What Makes You a Kingdom Kid. Today's guest is Eric Betts. I've known him for some time now. We're going to discuss a lot of different topics that we feel like will encourage you guys, uh, covering his disability, covering his uh, divorce, covering his childhood, and a lot of other areas that we feel like can affect your life. So without further ado, let's get started. This is E. 
Yeah. What's up, my brother? I'm blessed, brother. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I wanted to dive right in. Can you give us a little bit of details about your childhood? Oh man, childhood was a definitely a, I say it was a blessing. Yeah. You know, even though what I had to go through, moms was a drug addict. You know, dad was in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was just a blessing, man. It was a blessing because what I went through, it all started my journey as a child. Man. Yeah. So. That's what you went through, it all went through. Okay, so uh, what type of upbringing would you say? Because I know that you came from a poverty place where it's predominantly black people, and we kind of grew up in something that we would call the hood, but there's a way that God orchestrated the hood to be a part of your life. So how do you think that, or what are some reasons you think God allowed you to go through them experiences to shape and form who you are now? I believe that he allowed me to go through them experiences because um, to go back and reach the people to where they are, where, to, like for today, you feel me? Right. So you're right. allowing to grow up in that type of environment to see and to understand the people, you know, what they go through, how they're living, you know what I'm saying? So right. I thank God that He allowed me to grow up in the hood because I can now go back and relate to the people because sometimes people in that, in that type of environment in the ghetto feels like nobody understands and that's why they do the things that they do. So right. I thank God that I'm a blow, you know what I'm saying, that I go back out there, you feel me? Yeah, I got you. So uh, I want to get into a little bit of your teenage life mm -hmm. because, of course, you went through some stuff as a kid, but it wasn't. Well, actually, I want to revert back to your childhood really quickly just to touch on this. You you said that you were molested as oh, a kid. Man. What age were you that you, when you were molested? I said when I was about six, seven, six, six seven. You know, Dang, um, that's crazy. You got to watch your kids. You got to watch who's around your kids. You definitely do. You definitely do. And you got to ask some questions. Like, you know, yeah. they don't know because. When I was molested at that right. young age, you know, they'll say, don't say nothing, or, right. you know, don't tell nobody, and things right. like that. And um, and you'd be like, okay, you don't, because you're so young. You feel right. Me? So, so what what ways do you think the molestation affected you today, like or back then, or how it all, you know, what I mean, played a part in your um, life? And I opened up a demonic door in my life because it had me, you know, now leading me into things that I had no business in, like right. sex, pornography. Right. Uh, 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 curious about, you know, um, want to go deeper with females and things like that. And it's like, you know, uh, it messed me up. Cause I think about it, if I would have never got molested, when would I would have lost my virginity or would I be married? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like when I would have delved straight in, but because I was molested, I, um, it would have had you kind of turned out at a young age where you just kind of went wild. Right, right. So it, if you don't basically violated my, uh, property. Violated you yeah, and it yeah. taught you to actually validate other people. So I want to ask you did you ever molest somebody else after that? No, I never did no because way. a lot of times people who are molested goes and molest other people But what I did see, you could stop that is, cycle if you've been molested you could stop that cycle and that's true But the thing is what, I, what was happening was People that were molested. It's right. like the spirit recognized that spirit, spirit So it's yep. like I knew this individual was molested and they knew I was molested wow. So now we're drawing each other now. We're touching on each other. You know what I'm saying so yep. it's like that's, like you were touched on, I was touched on, now we touch on each other. It's like the spirit knows the spirit. spirit knows the spirit, yep. right, right, right. And, it, and, it's, and it's dangerous, man, if you don't watch your children and you don't, you know, keep them prayed up, pray over your children. You feel right. Me? Pray over your baby. So I want to ask another question. Uh, if you are comfortable asking this, was there a, was it a male or a female who molested you? It was a female. It was, was a female. Was she your age or older than you? A little older than me. Older than you? Yeah. Okay. And do you talk to her now? Have you forgiven her? Oh, man, I definitely forgave and, you know, allow God to work on my heart. Because it's important to forgive. Oh, man, if somebody true. molests you, your children, whatever, it's very important to forgive right. because God says he won't forgive you if you don't forgive others. Right, right. So I definitely forgave the individual, loved the individual. And now, you know, I'm going to be able to tell other people about it now. For me, it's a part of my testimony. So I thank God now he got the glory out of it. So what the enemy meant for bad, God always meant it for good. Right. Okay, so fast forward going to teenage years. What type of teenager was you? Were you uh, kind of uh, obedient? Was you rebellious? Like, what happened in your teenage life? Oh, uh, man, I was a hot boy, brother. You <laughs> was a hot boy? I was a hot boy, <laughs> man. Hey, it wasn't we all, hey, man. man. I was in juvenile I mean, I was in juvenile facilities. I was in the streets. I was thugging. I was selling drugs. I was right. robbing, getting shootouts. Right. I done did all that, you know what I'm saying? So I was basically a rebellious young boy. A troubled kid, that's all it was. A, a troubled kid. kid. Yeah. So did you have a relationship with God back then or were you just strictly out here without no guidance, no relationship? Uh, I definitely didn't have no relationship, but God knew me and he knew where I was gonna be today. But did you, you have any wreck like did you pray and stuff? Nah, not really. I went to church, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You know how 
a lot of families take their kids to church, you feel me? But yeah, just like, regular right, right, mama right, church. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But those things still help too. They uh, install some things. It was in definitely you. installed because when I went to my first time getting locked up, I said, Lord, I said, Jesus, if you get me out of this one, yeah. you feel me? I won't go back. You feel me? <laughs> he was showing me at that time that he was real, but I was just so young that we really, really see it. Yeah, right, right, right. So uh, did your mom teach you different stuff or what type of relationship did you have with mom? Ah, uh, man, mom, man, we used to be going at it, man. Mom yeah. was a, you know, she mean well, she tried her hardest, but right. when a parent have an addiction, anybody that has an addiction, right. it's kind of hard, you know what I'm saying, for them to try to stay focused on what they need to be focused on because that addiction is taking over their life. So right. me and mom, she loved me, but at the same time, she, you know, uh, was still caught up into her addiction, drinking and, uh, you know what I'm saying, smoking yeah. work. How do you think her addiction affected you as a kid? Oh, man, how it affected me, yeah. uh, bro, it had me like, I don't care. It turned out, I don't care about nothing, like, you feel me? Because it felt like the drug, she was more into the drug, and when she would get high yeah. or drunk, she would just turn into another individual, you know what I'm saying? So it made me, it pushed me into the street, because she, what, she, what, what was happening was she would get high yeah. and get me, try to get me away from the house so I could go into the streets and then land into uh, the streets. So she kind of was, it kind of worked itself out. Like, you go do you, I'm going to go do me. Uh -huh. So she was with you kind of wilding out. Mm -hmm. So in Eric's uh, troubled teenage life, that's whenever he met his disability. That's whenever it happened. So tell us through the story of how you got in trouble and then he ended up in a juvenile facility and then some stuff happened. So give us some details about that. Uh, man, I was in the county jail. I'm going to just right. fast forward. I was in the county jail. And they took me from out of the county jail, and they put me back in juvenile facility. Do you know what you did to get in there? Do you remember? What, to get in the county? Yeah. Uh, gun charge and robbery. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So they took me. Plus, I was on a run from a different state. Right, okay. So I was in Virginia. I ran from Virginia and came back to Pittsburgh. Right. And then got caught up into some trouble and things like that. So they put me in a county. And from the county, I went to juvenile. From juvenile, I went to um, a juvenile max called Newcastle Max. Right. And um, as we was up there... Um, he was playing football one Saturday morning, <clears throat> April 29th, you know what I'm saying, 2007, I believe. And oh, 2007. Wow, well, was, that was a little minute ago. Yeah, it was definitely a minute okay. ago. And um, we was playing football. I went to go tackle a kid, and we ran into each other at that time, and we hit his and broke my neck, man. Broke my neck. When y'all when y'all broke each other, boy, that person, did that person get injured at all? He was He was hurt, but he wasn't as bad he as that. He wasn't injured like right, you. Right, right. So how old were you? I was 17. 17. Um, so what did what happened to your world? Because as you know, 17 is like that pivotal age where you're kind of feeling yourself. You don't really know what to do in life. You're kind of mature, but not mature. Right. But then it's like, you know what I mean? How do you deal with a disability at that age? Oh, man. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. It was God with me the whole way, brother. Yeah. Because at the same time, I was on some, still had that street mentality. So once I got out of the uh, hospital and rehabilitation from that right. incident, it pushed, I went right back to what I knew. That's all I knew was a ghetto. So I went back to the ghetto and it just had me on some, I was lost, bro. I was yeah. really lost. Like, I was confused, lost, hurt, broken, like still trying to be cool and get myself together. Right. So basically, you was just kind of out of it. I was so out did of that? It. Would you say that those experiences caused you to have to go, like, push you towards God? Oh yes, most. So definitely. take us through when you first, like, kind of met definitely. God and you kind of took Him serious for the first time. Ah uh, man, I was at a breaking point, brother. I was at a breaking point to the place where I didn't want to live no more. Wow. And I didn't even like to look in the mirror. You feel me? I used to wow. look in the mirror, and I would be smoking some weed or something. I had some smoking some weed or a black amount. I would look in the mirror and say, I don't even know who I am. Wow. You feel me? So I was at a breaking point in my life to the point where I didn't want to live. So I went in my bedroom one day and I closed the door and I said, God, if you real, yeah, let me know because I don't want to live like this. Like, so you were really suicidal. Basically had suicidal thoughts. Suicidal thoughts. And so when you prayed that prayer, God revealed himself to you. Man, immediately. Immediately. Wow. Immediately. So how would you say your life changed after you met God? Like, in that phase of just like starting to meet God, your mass had changed, you start reading the Bible. What about you changed after that? Ah, oh, man, like it was to the point where society was so exciting to yeah. do that. Man, <laughs> God is real. Like I'm going to the homies. Like, man, I was one time I was walking down the street with one of my homies. And I'm like, bro, God is real, bro. Yeah. Like I had so much excitement to know that he was who he said he was. <laughs> so it, you know, um, nobody was really understanding me. They thought I was tripping, losing my mind. Like, bro, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. 
You feel me? So they're like, don't change on me. <laughs> at the same time, it wasn't their journey. It was my journey. Yours, so yeah, it yeah. led me to stay in the house a little bit more to get to know them a little bit more. And one time I met this lady. Uh, she, she, I met her outside of my house. Yeah. And um, she was like telling me about. I thought she was an angel. Yeah. But it was a messenger from God. You feel me? Right, right, so, right. She was telling me, like, there's a battle downstairs waiting for you in your building, da 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 da. Wow. As I went in the building, it was yeah. a white Bible. I got it to this day, you feel me? And I opened up that wow. Bible, man, I read the whole book of Psalms, bro. It just drew me so closer to God. And it was beautiful, man. It was so beautiful. So after you went to God, was there ever a time that you kind of, like, backslid? When you kind of start, like, being like, all right, I'm of God, I'm chilling, but then you got bored with it, yeah. and then you went back? Oh, yeah. I got that. I was so mad at God because I'm thinking, like, nobody was telling me the obstacles and that you're going to have trials and tribulations and you're going yeah. to go through the fire. And nobody told me none of that. They just told me all the good stuff and I always heard <laughs> the good stuff. Yeah. So I got mad at God. I'm like, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm tired of praying. I'm thinking I was going to walk. I am thought he was like a genius. Like, going to happen like this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of all this. I'm done. And I, I went back to the ghetto. And it's so crazy because the devil was so sneaky. Yeah. I had somebody working for me. And right. I was like, man, I'm about to go back to the hood. I'm about to go smoke. And the devil had the person in my house that already had weed. So he was like, already oh, wow. got it. The plug was already there. It was there. already there. Though. That's how it worked. It seemed like whenever you stop smoking or stop doing something, people start offering it to you for free. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? You start, when you smoke, you drink or something, you can't find it nowhere. But the minute you stop, everybody's like, bro, come smoke with me or something like that. But mm -hmm. it's crazy how sneaky the devil is. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, all right, so after God didn't heal you, and you were upset, how did you start overcoming that disability struggle? Because it's a struggle waking up every day, having mm -hmm. to depend on other people to do certain things you were used to doing. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome those struggles on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. You mean at the time or like right now? Like even at the time, how you overcame it, and even like right now? At the time, I was on some getting half. Like, you feel me? I yeah, you just numbed it. You numbed it. You yeah, numbed the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you feel me? But once the... Once the hour was gone, I'm back to reality. Like I still got this situation. Yep. I'm still messed up. I'm still yep. in this situation where I can't get out. But now I thank God because He said in His Word, "If you keep your mind stayed on Me, I'll keep you in perfect peace." Right. So I thank God now because my mind stayed focused on Him, and He gave me so much peace about the situation. Yeah. And not only that, I found out who I was. So it's like this chair don't make me. Right. So, I mean, this chair is not who I am. Right. It, it, it's just a. Uh, it was a stepping stone to get me to where I need to be. You feel me? Right. Like God had to do that to get you to who he wanted you to be right. to reach Hope. his people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what I mean? He'll do whatever he needs you to, whatever he needs you to do, he'll make sure he finesses your personality to get you there. And a lot of people are numbing themselves with drugs or with different stuff, with addictions. And basically that pain and that suffering you're going through is never going to leave you until you face it mm -hmm. and you give it to God. So I want to ask you about uh, your relationship. Because even though Eric was in a chair, he had quite a few relationships, and my brother never had a problem pulling a female. You know what I mean? So I want to discuss uh, his divorce. So what happened with your divorce? You met the young lady, and then what happened with that? Oh, man, I met the young lady. I'm thinking she was the one. And a lot of times we find somebody, and we think that they're the one. Right. You know, because we get caught up into our feelings, and we get caught up into our emotions. Right. Instead of getting caught up in God, and when we get caught up in the God, he will let you know if this person is not for you. He'll give you a sign. Right. But I was so caught up into my flesh and so caught up into the beauty of this young woman. And what had happened was it just made me uh, 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 take my eye for God. Yeah. And I started looking at this individual and I'm thinking she was going to be the one for me. We're going to be together forever and never right. ended up. And come to find out, you know, it just wasn't the one. It didn't know? work out. It didn't work out. So. I still pray, but it helped me a lot because it taught me how to forgive, it taught me how to love, yep. and still trust God in the midst of the pain and hurt. Because that was my next question. So after you went through that hurt, because that was like a public display. I mean, Eric, his divorce was really public. People really knew about it. They judged him, talked about him. So after going through that hardship, how was it trying to find love again? Because congratulations to my brother. He's engaged. Amen. You know what I mean? He found, he found somebody who he loves, who Amen. he's with, and Amen. he's engaged. But... How was it on that journey to found love after you was like exposed and so hurt behind yeah. that marriage? Um, that man, it was divorce. definitely a journey yeah. because when something like that happened, you know, you put a wall up, you put a guard up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. like I said, it taught me how to stay focused on God so God can reveal if this individual is the one or not. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so yeah. basically, you know, um, I met a lot of females, you know, and I would minister to them and I would pray for them, but you know, God will let me not get no peace about this. Like, no, I don't, yeah, I don't like that's it. not the one. Yeah, that's not the yeah, one. Yeah. But at the same time, I had to get, I had to heal. You 
Yeah, yeah, you have to kind of fix yourself. So what would you say to somebody who is trying to get into a relationship before they even really know their self? Don't do it. Get to know God because once you get to know God, then you'll know who you are. Because mm. God gives you that personality. He's the one that created the man. He's the one that created you. Yep. And he knows you more than anybody. He'll let you know who you is. And yep. then once you find out who you is, then you can be able to get into a relationship with somebody else and, you know, find out who they are. You feel me? Right. So now that you're engaged and you're planning to get married, you know what I mean? We're still trusting God for you to get out this chair. Oh, no doubt. So how do you deal with the unknown? Because now that you're in this relationship, you know what I mean? Your life is about to change completely. How would you say you trust God with your future and the unknown of not knowing? Will you get out the chair? Mm -hmm. Will this marriage work? Mm -hmm. How would you trust God with that, with the oh, future? Man, this is all about the faith walk. This is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what it is. Walking about. by faith, not Walking by sight. By fight, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank God because one thing about God is we don't know how he's going to do it. Right. But we know that he's going to do something great. Right. And one right. thing about having a relationship with God, he'll let you know what he's going to do. He right. will speak a word or send somebody to tell you or send confirmation, but you just got to believe that he's going to do it. Right. And when you walk by faith, you have to first see it in the unseen world. Right. You know right. That's major. And you got to really pray and see stuff and get a visual of it. That's why I like to tell people to write stuff down because as you write it, you, you express what's in the spiritual realm and you bring it to the physical realm on paper yes. and then you're able to pray over it and speak over it yes. and that thing actually manifests itself yes. so that's some good stuff yes 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 hey man it's, it's just a blessing man to see god move bro it's a, <laughs> isn't it's it it's a blessing to see isn't him it because we don't like the bible say his ways and not our ways you know right saying? right 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 and when you walk by faith you just saying lord whatever you do i'm trusting you Regardless, yeah, whatever regardless, it is, I'm like, just gonna trust you. And it took me a while to get where to where I am. Yeah, but to just faith. trust God. Right, 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 right. So, with that being said, all the different things. So, Eric, actually, he's been going to a church that's called what? Sanctified Ministry. Sanctified Ministry. So, within this church. Eric's been dealing with a lot of controversy because he made some controversial statements mm -hmm. about Jesus and he said different things that his church didn't agree with. And there was kind of like some, so roughly, you ruffled some feathers. Right. So I wanted to ask, what exactly happened in that situation? What did you say and then what did you mean? Because as I talked to him behind the scenes, what he said and the way it was perceived isn't really what he was trying to say. And sometimes air can be a little bit controversy, right, like right, controversial. Right. And right, uh, right. I wanted to get the viewers to understand exactly what he meant. Well, what I said was, you know, it was a beautiful thing when I said, I said that I will always acknowledge Jesus because he is our Lord and Savior. He shed right. the blood for our filthy sins. You feel me? Right. He hung himself on a cross and what I meant was he wasn't God but right. he was God because he had the spirit of God inside of him right and what I meant was that Jesus is the way to the father right when you open up a door you're saying come on into the house right you feel me so once you come into the house now you have entrance to all the house and that's what I was basically trying to get the people to understand is we're stopping at Jesus Right. But Jesus said, don't stop with me. I want you to come to me so I can get you to the Father. Right. And access to all the things in, in this the earth. Right. In yeah, this kingdom, kingdom on this earth. You so so, he, so even though he said just now, he said, you know, Jesus is the Son of God. He's our Lord and Savior, but Jesus isn't God. That right there stirred people up because the Bible says that Jesus is God. Uh -huh. Jesus says that me and my Father oh, are one. Right. So therefore, Jesus is God. And I think that's where the... Uh, the miscommunication came in at because Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. However, Eric is saying in the tri in the triune, uh, the the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Uh, God is God. Jesus is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So what Eric is saying is Jesus is Jesus, but Jesus isn't God right. like the Father. Jesus is God the Son, mm -hmm. but He isn't God the Father. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is that Jesus, God the Son, came down to. Uh, Show receive us, us mm -hmm. so that we can go to God the Father. So he basically was just um, letting you guys know that after you get saved with Jesus Christ, because a lot of people say this, oh, I believe in Jesus, I got saved, and now I'm done with it. And he's saying there's a whole other life on the other side of moving past accepting Jesus. You say, I accept Jesus, but after you accept Jesus, now go into the Father. Go into living in that intimate relationship where God can reveal the kingdom to right. you so that you're not just living in your same cycle of right. abuse, right. abuse right. but saying, I accepted Jesus. Because if we all say, you know, I accepted Jesus, but we still do the same stuff. Right. And Jesus is saying, 
I don't want you to accept me to do the same stuff. I want you to accept me so I can take you now to the Father so you can live the kingdom lifestyle. And that's what Eric was trying to say, just to clean up, you know what I mean, a lot of rumors and different stuff like that. Would you agree? And another thing, another thing Jesus said this though, brother. He said that you can't get to the Father except you come through me. Exactly. So that's basically what it was, you know. Right. Um, I, I, I like the controversy because I want yeah. to open up the people's eyes, right? Yeah. Let That's them what know he that, you know, he it's, it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's more to this thing. We got to seek. And once you start to seek, God will start to open up things to you right. so you can see for yourself. And then once you seek for yourself, nobody's opinion really, really doesn't right. matter. Because like seek the word you. yourself seek. and then, you know what I mean, get yourself approved for right. your own wisdom, your right. own relationship. Right. And God does reveal different stuff to us. Mm -hmm. Overall, the message is going to be the same, but God explains it to us differently right. in order to help us on our personal journey. That's right. So I just want to say if there's anybody that has a disability and it doesn't mean you're in a wheelchair or you're not being disabled in a physical sense, it could be in a spiritual and a mental sense, whatever. What would you say or what words would you give them to encourage them on their daily struggle in dealing with a disability? Yes. Uh Basically, um, seek the Lord, talk to the Lord, you know, um, always pray and acknowledge God because one thing about heaven, you don't have to have a physical disability, you can have a right. spiritual disability. Yep. And a lot of people do have a spiritual disability, but or mental, or mental there's a disability, you may not be able to see the disability, but yep. you all struggle with some type of disability. And when you understand God, you know that your disability no longer your disability. It becomes now, his ability to do great and mighty things. So if you have an ability, always give that thing, give that disability to God. Give it to God. Let God have his way with it. And he's going to get the glory because God's the one in the Bible that says, I'm the one that made lame, the mute, the deaf. I am do I do all that. So right. get it to God and he'll bless you and he'll use you in that situation. He'll use you in your in your disabled situation. Mm -hmm. But you like to say, what's the what's the term you say? It's my not this. Dis my disability is God's ability. Okay, so it's not a disability, it's ability, it's ability. to let God shine through you. Amen. I love right. that, bro. Right. So right. I just want to uh, say, is there anything else? Oh, I do want to mention something. Eric, he writes children's books, and he has his own ministry on Facebook. It's called Uplifting the Struggle. That's right. And when he encouraged you, he has uh, a children's book that's called The Boy Who Couldn't Walk. But walked with Jesus, walked with God, walked with God miracles. and performed many miracles. And he also has another line of children's books that's coming out, one called Field Trips to Heaven. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has more books coming out for children, but I'm sure that eventually he'll get into some adult books too. But right. what inspired these children books that you... Oh man, that's a good question because I feel as though the children has lost their imagination. Right, right. And, and, and one thing about having a, being a child... You, when I know when I was a child, I had a big imagination. Yeah, me now, too. Now me the too. children are so grown <laughs> that they don't have an imagination no more. So we try to make these babies so grow up to so quick. Right. And then when they get grown, they don't never, they don't understand what it is to be a kid. So I like to write these books to open up their imagination. Let them know that God, be a child. Enjoy, enjoy being a child. And, and it helps them to have faith because God says we must be like a child in order to receive exactly. the kingdom. Because you got to be able to see it and imagine it before it happens. And when right. you're a kid, you, you can imagine anything. anything. And that's why it happens like right. this. But as an adult, I always say this. The the adult who's successful is the kid, is the adult who made it uh, basically with his childhood. Like you kept a part of your childhood in your adult life. Mm -hmm. And that's the adult who made it because you still are a child in some ways, mm -hmm. because God says you have to humble yourself like a child yeah. to receive yeah. the kingdom. That's right. But uh, that's awesome. But tell us a little bit about your ministry that you do on Facebook. Oh, uh, the other the struggle. We basically uplift the people that's, you know, feel discouraged, feel like there's no hope, feel like they don't know who they are. You know right. what I'm saying? Because we all struggle. I don't care if you're rich, poor, or right, middle class. Right, right. We all have some type of struggle. So our job is to uplift the struggle. God give us words. We have different people from different states. Uh, Miami. We have people from uh, Louisiana, from right. Texas. Myself from Pittsburgh. So we just uh, have a word and we encourage and we put up things up there. And, um, you know, by having like a little cookout in the summertime. How yeah. God moves in us. That's what we do. But we just be trying to uplift the struggle, man. You do have you he, he has a lot of different events that he does. It's like cookouts and other homeless drives and he does different stuff. So I would say if you're into that stuff and just giving back, get in contact with Eric's ministry. We're gonna have a link uh on this post to help you be able to find Eric. But uh is there anything that you feel like you wanna be known for or anything that you wanna make sure the viewers know about you before uh, we wrap man, up? The only thing you need to know about me is that I love the Lord with all my heart. 
And without him, I can't make it. So I thank God for who he is in my life. And um, just know that God is on your side. You <laughs> feel me? I don't worry about titles. I'm a, um, I'm, I'm a minister and all that, but I don't care about titles. But call me Brother Here. If you ever see me out in the world, brother my name is Brother E. <laughs> you feel me? So it's all about giving God the glory, man. That's all, man. I ain't, it ain't about me. It's all about God. All right, bro. That's what's up. But, uh, if you can't tell, Eric is rocking one of the Kingdom Kids shirts. Kingdom Kids, Kingdom baby. Kids stand up. Yeah. What's popping? So if you want to get a Kingdom Kids shirt, just make sure you hit me up through Facebook or some other type of advertisement site that you recognize my t-shirts on. Also, Eric has a, a a book. This is his book, the children's book, The Boy Who Couldn't Walk. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, hit Eric up on one of the links we provide or something like that that you can tell and his ministry will reach back to you. That's kind of it for me, and I love you. I want to thank you for this interview, and I want to say uh, a lot of people's lives are going to be changed by this interview, so I thank you for letting God shine through you, and you know what I mean? I'm believing you for your healing. I'm believing God for your yes, healing. Yes, so I ask yes. you guys to stand in prayer for me, yes. with me, for my brother, yes, and uh, yes, God bless you, my brother. Uh, God bless you. Good God. interview, bro.